other ministers that they Good morning and welcome. Welcome those of you who are in the room, those of you who um, I'm going to say are in the west transept because that's where the television is. Um, and that's where we can see y'all who are joining us on Zoom. Our service this morning is Holy Eucharist Rite 1. It begins on page 323 of the Book of Common Prayer. If you would please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 324, please join with me in the Gloria. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, 
God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. Thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, for the bondage of our sins, and give us, we beseech thee, the liberty of that abundant life which thou hast manifested to us in thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook, and the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your... Uh, has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes so they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until the cities lie waste without inhabitant, the houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away and vasts the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth of an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be God. The psalm today is Psalm 138, and we will read responsively, dividing by whole verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down to your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. I called, you answered me, you increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk through the midst of trouble, you stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies, and your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make great his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
The epistle today is from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are also being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though a few have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am, and what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so to you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thank you. If you would please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there that at the, at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, then the one belonging to Simon, and asking him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets, let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they called to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats ashore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. So the Gospel of Luke is nothing at all like the Gospel of John, except when it is. And this little story of the call of the first apostles um, is evidence of that. Luke has departed a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit from Mark's storyline. So let's talk a little bit about source criticism just for a second. So, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels, sound an awful lot alike. Matthew and Luke tend to follow Mark's storyline. Matthew and Luke also have some things that they share that Mark doesn't have, and then each Matthew and Luke have some things that are just their own. John, on the other hand, stands apart from the others. There's only a few things that get shared in common between John and Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You're going to hear me talk about this over and over and over again, because one of the questions that I always ask is, where did the story come from? Luke departs from Mark's storyline, putting off the call of the first apostles until some stuff has happened. In Mark and Matthew, 
Jesus has just come back, has just, just come back from being tempted in the wilderness, has just started preaching, and is just wandering along by the lake and says, hey, if you follow me, you will be, and there's a different turn of phrase, you will be fishers of men. And inexplicably, they just follow. Inexplicably because none of you would do it. Right, you're at the end of your workday. And let's just talk about the end of a waterman's workday. You're at the end of your workday and this guy that you've never seen or heard anything about says, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men as if that is understandable. None of you would do it. I wouldn't do it. So Luke, and this is what most scholars of Luke say, is that Luke shoves it a little later, so at least there's some things that Simon and James and John had heard about before they ever encountered Jesus. It's a narrative decision on Luke's part that Jesus has done some healings. Jesus has done some teaching. And everyone's already curious about this guy. Luke doesn't say, I will make you fishers of people. He says, don't be afraid, follow me and you will be catching people. Now, you can argue with me that that really isn't substantive, substantively different, but I'm gonna argue that it is. I started off by saying Luke is nothing like John except for when it is. This miraculous catch of fish only is alluded to one other time in the Gospels, and that's a post-resurrection appearance at the end of the Gospel of John. They've been out fishing all night. They haven't caught anything. Jesus is on the lake shore and sees them and then says, Toss your nets out on the other side of the boat. And they drag in a net full of fish, 153. Like, how specific is that? 153 large fish, and the nets weren't torn. And in that scene, Simon Peter does something very strange. He looks at the other guys in the boats and says, it's the Lord. And then he jumps in the ocean, uh, jumps in the sea and swims ashore. And then you have that fun little scene where Jesus and Peter are walking along the shore. And Jesus says to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And after the third time, it says, Peter felt hurt because he asked him a third time, do you love me? So it's funny, this story in Luke sounds a lot like this story at the end of John, this post-resurrection story. And scholars argue about why this is. Why does Luke have this story? How does John have a story and Luke have a story that are so similar? What path of the oral tradition did it wind? And why did Luke make the decision to put it here? Because it's really easy for us to read the Gospels and just say, this is the storyline. And that the evangelists didn't have decisions to make. Because they did. Because they wanted to make points. And Luke's point, and it's the point made by Isaiah, objecting to God's call. It's the point made by Paul saying he is the least of the apostles. It's not that Simon had his own calling. It's that God comes calling. God comes calling into our lives. God comes into Simon's life at the end of a long workday. 
Let's talk about how Simon Peter and James and John and Andrew fished. Years ago, I remember when Art Conway <laughs> took Malcolm Turnbull to teach him how to fly fish. Have any of you all ever fly fished other than Art and me in this room? Fly fishing is a very specific kind of thing. Either you really are, you see a fish and you target it, or you see a spot where a fish most likely is. And basically, you lie to the fish. You have a little teeny thing that is supposed to look and behave like what the fish likes to eat. So you lie to it. It's a little game of specific deceit. You toss the lure, hoping for that one prize. Then there's silly people like me who like to surf fish and you like drive out on the beach and surf fishing is best when the weather is its worst. And you wade into an ocean and you throw a piece of bait as far as you possibly can. And then you wrestle a thing that is significantly smaller than you out of its own environment. And it can get a little scary sometimes. But again, you're tossing out something hoping to fool a fish. That's not how Simon Peter and his partners and his brother fished. I don't know how many of you have ever been to um, the commercial docks down in Guinea in Gloucester County or the commercial docks on Wanchies, at Wanchies on Manio Island or the commercial docks where the Fast Brothers warehouse used to be in Hampton. What they have are nets. And there's a couple different ways that they set their nets. One is a pound net, which basically they make a giant spiral. And the fish just kind of swim into the middle and can't get out. And then they scoop up the net with all the fish. Or you do it like Simon Peter and James and, and, James and John. You drag. You have nets with weights on the bottom and you drag and you just bring everything in that you can get. And if you're lucky, there's a school of fish. If you're not lucky, you're still hauling in heavy, wet, dirty nets. That was Simon Peter's day. They'd been out all night, hadn't caught a thing, tired, sweaty, dirty, and let's just say, probably not of a gentle vocabulary. And here comes this guy. Can I get in your boat so I can get out on the, on the water just a little bit so I can talk to these people? And then let's put out a little further and let's drop your nets again and let's see what you can catch. And all of a sudden, None of you would do it. I wouldn't do it. But God comes calling. God comes walking into our lives calling. And I'm going to argue that Luke probably has it a little more right than Mark and Matthew. It's not that we're the fishers of people. It's that God comes calling so that we can drag this community, drag this world, and bring people into God's loving embrace. No matter how tired we are, no matter how defeated we feel, no matter whether or not we understand who it is that's calling us, God comes into our lives calling. God comes into our lives calling us to drag everyone along into God's loving embrace. I don't know how well any of us do that. I don't know if any of us really have the imagination to commit to that. 
I don't know whether or not we have the confidence to even attempt that. And the funny thing is, regardless, God's going to keep coming into our lives, calling. And we will object like Isaiah, oh no, I'm a sinful man. We will demure like Paul saying, I am the least of these. We will want God to walk away from us because we feel unworthy, like Simon Peter. And God will keep coming, keep calling, keep asking, keep hoping, keep equipping us to drag everyone along in a God's loving embrace. If there's anything the world needs now, this fraught, frightened, broken, and still beautiful world, is people who will go and catch others for the love of God. If there's anything this world needs to know, is that God loves them. If there's anything this world needs to know, is that there is hope in the midst of the peril. And that's why God keeps coming and keeps calling, keeps calling you, keeps calling you to drag the world along into God's loving embrace. If you would please stand. And turning to page 326, please join with me in affirming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. Prayers of the people begin on page 328 of your prayer book. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may 
both by the life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive the Holy Spirit, the ho thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in sour, sorrow, trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continually continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 331, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. In some safe manner, please greet one another in the name of the Lord. You can be seated while I do this. Oh, I forgot the candles. Thank you. 
So having accolated here my whole life, you would think that I wouldn't need to have light the candles on the checklist, but you know, yeah. um, <laughs> the, the Zoom checklist prevails. <laughs> If you would please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. 
And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. To be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. 
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. This is a prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 339. If you would please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, the all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us, so be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Those in the room can please be seated. Just a couple things um, I want to reiterate. I know that they were in the weekly email. Um, February 20th is um, our annual meeting. We have two people rotating off the vestry, which means there's opportunity for two of you to um, conduct, um, your, carry out a ministry of administration and governance in this fine little parish. So um, please do, um, Take time and consider um, what your availability would be and what gifts you could offer in that role. That's one. Number two, um, St. Bartholomew's in, in my lifetime has had a couple different iterations of um, an intentional um, intercessory prayer group. Meaning there was a group of people who were committed to praying daily for those people on our prayer list. 
Um, very often, um, to the extent um, in which people were willing to share what um, their needs were, what we were praying for, um, those people in that intercessory prayer ministry would know. Um, and so they could pray with, with some information and some clearer intention um, for those commended to us. Um, very often that group would meet regularly, sometime, sometimes as, as frequently as weekly, sometimes a couple times a month. Um, the idea being um, to gather together um, in community and, and pray for those um, who've entrusted themselves to us. Um, Sarah Brockenborough um, was the transition ministry officer um, for the Diocese of Virginia. When I first started talking to her about St. Bartholomew's, one of the things that she said, and it never really dawned on me, um, but it's really nice to have someone from outside tell you what you look like. Um, she said, St. Bartholomew's is a little retreat. It's this little sanctuary tucked away in the woods. So one of the things that happens in retreat settings, one of the things that happens in safe havens is it's a place of prayer. Um, I think it only makes sense with who St. Bartholomew's has been and who St. Bartholomew's is being called to be um, that we have some new iteration of that intercessory prayer ministry. Um, if you're interested, please be in touch with me directly. Um, lastly, so every Monday evening at 6.30, um, there is a faithful group of people who gather to talk about the lectionary passages for the coming Sunday, and um, they close their evening by praying Compline together. Um, currently, that is our only uh, opportunity for Christian formation. Uh, I would like to see more. Um, and we can do anything. We can do it in person, we can do it online, we can figure a way to do it in, in hybrid form, we can do topical things, we can do book studies, we can do anything. Um, and the reason I say this is, it's an utterly normal thing to do. Christians gathering together to talk with one another about God. It is utterly normal. Um, it's been going on for a couple thousand years in Christianity and was going on for a few thousand years before that in Judaism. So it's a normal thing. And what it does is fosters growth. It builds um, interpersonal relationships. It builds trust um, and it provides opportunity for both vulnerability and accountability in our, in our spiritual growth. Um, so I would like to see more but I'm not gonna just throw out my ideas at you. I wanna hear from you. What kind of things you would like to talk about? What kind of setting you would like to talk about those things in? So um, please, again, um, my email is really easy. It's my name, 2003, digit two, digit zero, digit zero, digit three. It's the year I graduated from seminary. It should be easy to remember at gmail.com. Um, my phone number comes out on the weekly email, um, both my cell phone number and the number here at the office. Please, 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 I want to hear from y'all um, before I go, you know, I mean, I can tell you to get behind me and let's go take that hill for Jesus, but like, that's not necessarily a collaborative way to work. So, um, and I would like to, I would like to work with y'all um, in a collaborative way. So I want to hear from you, um, both particularly about on the intercessory prayer ministry um, and about other Christian formation opportunities. Fair enough. So is there anything else from y'all for the good of the cause? Um, yeah. So Mal everyone knows this. Malcolm's birthday is um, the 11th and I'm, I'm trying to do math, which means it's, it's Friday. So Friday, this coming Friday, February 11th is Malcolm's 85th birthday. The flowers um, here today were given um, uh, in Thanksgiving for his life and for his friendship um, to us. Um, so yes, happy birthday, Malcolm, a little early. Um, and you know, you'll probably be hearing from me another time too to say the same thing. Um, so anything else for the good of the cause? Kathy.
So can <coughs> oh, good. so can tabs. We're still collecting can tabs for the Ronald McDonald, for the Ronald McDonald House. Can tabs for Ronald McDonald House. There's a jar in the narthex. Okay, anything else? So is there, so thank you, Wesley Ann. So we will be collecting on the 20th, um, same day as our annual meeting, we'll be collecting food for the lamb's basket. Is there a list of what their needs are? Fresh fruit or canned fruit? Uh, uh, okay, so canned fruit, um, soups, canned meats, non-perishables. Okay, um, and I will trust uh, I will trust y'all to be generous. If you um, if you don't feel safe returning to a congregate setting like church or the annual meeting, um, you know the the building is open every day because um, Senior Insights is here. I'm here quite a bit. You can come by and, and drop off um, during the week as well. Um, and so if you're, if you're not comfortable in a congregate setting, I would encourage you to do that. Um, and I'll trust your generosity. Anything else? So Virginia, I wanna hear about Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you had that birthday trip, and I'm glad it was fun. Okay. There's still stew. There's still stew to there's there's stew for you to buy and give to friends. Um, yeah. So there's still there's still stew. Um, yeah, and, and and that's another one of those things you can come by. Um, it's in the freezer in the kitchen. Um, come by and and. Grab what you like. Okay. And you can pay online and well, and yeah, pay for it. Pay, paying for it would be helpful. Um, <laughs> so, okay. If you would please stand as you are able. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So if you're gonna break the rubric and say hallelujah, like that's not a lukewarm word. Don't mumble it. Say it. Say it for real. So let's try it again. Since you're going to break the rubric, go ahead and break it with gusto. Okay. Walk in, <laughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. That's the way you break a rule, right there. <laughs> Whatever.